Well, I think this time you're going to think I flipped my lid because this afternoon this setting for repair is a realistic TRC 1002. We have the service manual there. It was catalogue number 219111, and these were around in the UK here in 1982 1983. They are a huge hand porter by today's standards, and they're pretty rugged. And this firm who has a number of these, um, I think they have got, I'll just have to count this up. Yes, I think they've got eight of them. And I remember getting one of these in for repair in the 1990s from them, which had dropped off a cooling tower. And although it did crack the bottom of the printed circuit board and the case looks a bit scuffed, it did actually survive. Now... I so say these are huge and they don't offer very many facilities. They're a two channel crystal controlled set and they work in realistic, wonderful fashion of having either 10 AA rechargeable batteries, 10 times 1.2 volts equaling 12 volts, or 8 AA throwaway batteries at 1.5 volts, so 8 times 1.5 also make 12 volts, and then you put the two dummy batteries in. Never be tempted to run them at a higher voltage you're going to end up with a lot of things which will fail. So when running these off an external power supply, as we are in this test uh, um, situation, do make sure you're running it on a 12 volt power supply and not a 13.8 volt power supply. The bench power supply here is a regulated um, laboratory type one, so we've got an ammeter as well as the voltmeter. Now as these sets came, they came fitted with channel 20 in position A. And then there's an option, there were certain channels which Tandys would sell you at the time. And I seem to recall they could sell you 9, 14, 19 and 13. They were the only channels which you could have other than the tw number 20 it came with. Now this customer, we had crystals made for them so they could use these on channel 37. And I'll just go through the paperwork and that's the order from HiQ International. Just in case you need to order crystals for these, HiQ International, it's their QC50 is the uh, holder type, and looking at this for channel 20, it looks to me like it's 9.26375. So that's going to be a times three crystal. Anybody who wants to know what the crystal formula is, it's here in the service manual and I'll be happy to answer a question on that if they want to have crystals specially made. Now this has come in for service, it's a routine service, they have these serviced about every three years and as 30 years on, well they're all still working for them so they've not felt they've needed to change them. So here we go, I've already taken the, the back off they are an absolute pain to work on and that's because apart from the external aerial socket they've got no external sockets so that means that you've got to have little crocodile clip leads all made up to go to the uh, test points which the radio does at least have they're amazingly good quality they work really well and I was astounded back in 1983 when we did our first range tests on these sets and I've got the sheet here. The range test we were doing at the time, it only went up to six miles. That was our start point, just there at the bottom of the chart. And the test road ended there, six miles away. This was relatively open countryside near Gainsborough, here in Lincolnshire, um, in the UK. And I thought these were going to one and a half watts output. I thought they are perhaps going to work for a mile and a half or something like that, but no. We got six miles, it went right to the end of the chart, it was still giving us an S4 reading. And we found that was incredible. I repeated these tests uh, on a much longer range chart, which we made up um, about three years ago. We got something ridiculous, it was something like nine miles. I just find it astounding today. And the transmitter on these, it uses a Mitsubishi 2SC2166 output transistor and a Mitsubishi 2SC2086 driver transistor. And, you know, those kind of transistors, it can do 9 or 12 watts. So 
you tend to find that when it's turned down to one and a half watts, which it is in this case, on its telescopic aerial, then it's not really having to work very hard away at, at all. Now, I've never had one of these in with a broken aerial because the customers have always been careful with them. But chances are that they're pretty SWR proof as well. Right, well, without any further ado, we'll go straight into the transmitter. <clears throat> and I'll read this all straight from the service manual, and you'll see it's a single conversion set. Now, under this screening can is the crystals. And I've already taken the screws out of that so you can see. And we'll just zoom in on that. Because it goes without saying our aerial wire is now in the way. And it's marked in here that you've got transmit crystal a transmit crystal B I'll use the yellow tool you might be able to see it better and then we've got the receive crystals A and the receive crystal B and so these don't come with two sets of crystals in they come with one so if you buy one of these off eBay 99% chance then it's going to just come with a single channel fitted. But of course, crystal manufacturers can make those for you. Now I've got, apart from the moan, I've got about lack of sockets because if you've got an external speaker socket or earphone socket, it'd be easy to connect the test equipment up. The only other moan I've got is there's no crystal trimmer for the second channel. So sometimes you've got to do it as a, you've got to set the frequencies a bit of a compromise. If it's single channel, yeah, you can get it spot on. But if it's got more than one channel fitted you're sometimes having to take an average and that is really poor. Now I've come from a background of professional business radio and you just wouldn't have had that in um, in commercial two-way radio products because these were made down to price. They were £59.99 at the time in 1983 but as I say they do work incredibly well and they've got these metal range boost side panels which make your body part of the ground plane arrangement and it really works. Right the first thing we need to do is to locate coil tw uh, number 10, L10, and we're going to adjust the um, oscillator. And we're going to be connecting that to test point 6. Now you can't see my uh, meter here. I'll just zoom out from there. Just locate test point 6. And test point 6 is next to is right next to L10. Yes, there is indeed a a pin there. So we'll just do that. So we'll set that into transmit. And if I can find where I've put my phosphor bronze trimming tool which is just there. It's one of these several hand jobs when you're trying to press transmit, hold the test prod and the uh, tuning stick at the same time. So with a three-handed shuffle, there we go. And that is Pete. So that's our first one, L10. Let's make sure you, you've seen that, L10, which is there. So our next one is to set the frequency, and it's CT2. And CT2 is the one just there, because they're the transmit crystals, whereas those are the receive crystals. So we'll just set that. I'll go into transmit. I'm now on the, on the test set. And it should be I'm on channel 20, it should be 27 decimal 79125. It's slightly low, which is to be expected as the crystals age. So it's 27.79035. And we'll just trim that up. I will be checking the second channel um, later off this video and just make sure that is within tolerance. So we've now set it on frequency. The next thing we have to do 
is to set L11 and L12. And L11 <coughs> is there. And L12 is there. So, what do we do? Well, the manual says we go on to test point 7. And test point 7... Yeah, right. Um, that's caught me out. It's ages since I've done one of these. Right, well, we'll find test point 7 and uh, we'll come back to the video in a moment. Right, having found test point 7 and had to look at the circuit diagram, it's actually the leg of that resistor just there and it does say on the printer circuit board test point 7 so I'm just going to now set that and find it again so I'm going into transmit whilst holding that maximum now on the meter, maximum again on the second one on the meter and then L12 once again we've got maximum so that's now set. You can go backwards on these stages and do it again and do it again just to get the, every last ounce of performance out of these kind of sets. So that's our next um, stage completed. So now we're going to you can put a, an, an ammeter in um, across a test point. Um, it goes across test point three if you want to do that method. But I'm now going to move on to the test set. And I'm going to do 13, 16, 19 and 21 um, into the test set. Now 13 is that one. So we've done. We set that one initially. I've just done those two with test point seven. And we're now moving on to L13, and then it's L16, and then it's L19, which is in the can, and L21, which is that one there. So I'm just going to do those. We'll set it into transmit. I'm now looking at the meter. Switch your... Um, the test set on to that. So I'm doing the first one of those. And as you can see we've got a nice peak there. And the next one. Got a peak there. And we do need to use a different tool for the next one. And we've got a peak there, and then the final one is there. Now then, how many? What's the kind of power that's actually doing? Uh, it is doing. This is never the clearest. Uh, meter unfortunate on this particular test set. I wish it was a digital one like it is on the others. So we're on that scale we are doing ooh, just over one watt. The trouble is do you believe that? And do we believe it because we've got a bad SWR because of the... I'll just go back to the camera. Because we're using crocodile clip lead, we're going to have a slight SWR problem there, and this could throw the uh, results that we're getting. Now that meter's reading 1 watt. I'm going to run through these again, and just see whether we can get just that little bit more out of it. I'm just going to... 
I've got a bad connection as well somewhere. Yeah, I've just been able to peek a bit more on. Now we've got that reading, yes. Very careful with that one. There we go. Yep, well, it's reading round about the just over the one watt. And the limit specification is 1.2. And as I say, I'm just think with the SWR loss we've got, I think that's within specification. Now, What we need to do is do the deviation on the transmitted audio. And in this case, it's VR4. And VR4, there is a preset just there, just down there. That is the deviation. So we'll get our little oscillator out. It's very difficult to work on things which you can't plug an external microphone into. We're getting two and a half on that. Just take it down a fraction, actually. There we go. Then I'll do the whistle test, which is even more awkward. There's an electric condenser mark in the bottom of these sets. Yep, that's reading fine. Well, that really concludes the transmitter. So I've got my test equipment into the test point there, just to recap. Test point one.